In the name of Allah, the merciful, the great, the most powerful. Allah who I praise and worship, who I see as a guide and within my life and yours, hopefully. I pray that he will guide us to the best, that our best days are up in the future to come. And the worst times is the times that we meet our Lord in the day of judgment when we're asked about our actions. I am your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. In a series that we have under the prophetic traits, I pray that you and I will enjoy ourselves. I know that time is very valuable, and you might have a lot of things to do in your life, especially at this moment in time, but we're talking about the greatest man ever. We're talking about one in a lifetime, actually, one in a world lifetime. There has been greatness in the past of many prophets, righteous men, but none was as great as the Rasul as great as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. One of the greatest traits of his is what we know of Rahmatan Lil Alameen. He is merciful to all humanity. Every prophet before him was sent to his people, the tribe that he comes from, descends. Except the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was sent to all humanity. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And indeed, we only sent you mercy to all humanity. Brothers and sisters and viewers out there in the West and the East, when we talk about, about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we're talking about the mercy for you and your family, in your nation, in the world at large, including the animals and the mammals, including the rocks and stones. He guided the universe to what benefits it, stood in between what harms in the universe at large. A Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we Muslims believe, is a messenger to all mankind and a mercy to all mankind. We saw that evident in every step that he took. Every issue that he addressed. Aisha said in one of her ahadiths, مَا خِيُّرَ الرَّسُولَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ إِلَّا اخْتَارَ أَيْسَرَهُمَا And the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم was never given an option between two issues that he did not choose the easiest of the two, the softest of the two. He used to tell those who he sent to other nations or other tribes, Yassiru, Wala tu Asiru, Bashiru, Wala tu Nafiru. And make it easy on people. And do not be harsh. And call people to good. And don't drive people away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, because he's the mercy for all mankind. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا if you were rude, غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ hard-hearted, لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ they would have left you and walked away. There was never anyone that came to the Prophet and hoped to get some mercy that he did not get. The daughter of Hatim al Ta'i was captured with her village. When they tried to attack the Muslims, they were defeated. So she enters to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, do you know who I am? 
He said, no, I do not. She said, I am the daughter of Hatim al-Ta'i. I am the daughter of the most generous man in the history of the Arabian world. Will I be given to someone to serve? And my father lived his life to feed. He looked at her and said, I wish your father was a believer. We would have prayed mercy on him. But for his generosity, you and your tribe are free to go. Her brother, who had fled out of fear, she went after him and she said, I came from a man that no one reaches him that he doesn't forgive. Go to him. He will forgive you. Adi comes to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and like his sister said, he was forgiven. When the Muslim army was surrounding Mecca and they were about to attack Mecca with 10,000 and they surprised the Meccans, they did not know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, was coming with his army. He heard one of his commanders say, اليومو يومو الملحمة. Today is the day we shed the blood. He turned, he said, لا. اليومو يومو المرحمة. Today is the day of mercy. And relieved him from his post. But put someone else that has more mercy than he. He enters Mecca. Prior to that, let me take you back a little bit. While they were camping, Abu Sufyan wanted to come to negotiate. Abu Sufyan was the head of, the, uh, of Quraysh. And the Rasul had issued a command that if you are to find him, kill him. But Abu Sufyan found Al Abbas, who was a close friend of his. And Al Abbas allowed him to write, and he was rushing and running to reach the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while Umar has the sword chasing them, wanting to get to Abu Sufyan before he gets to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he can kill him because he knew that if he gets to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will forgive him. But Abu, Ibn Abbas, oh, Al-Abbas and Abu Sufyan were quicker, quicker than Umar. They got to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave him. It was his nature to forgive. He enters Mecca and everybody's waiting. What's the verdict against the enemies, the arch enemies of Muhammad for the last 21 years? And he stood up and he said, What do you think I will do to you? But they knew his nature. See, they knew who he was. They said, Akhun Kareem. Ibn Akhin Kareem, a, a generous brother, a son of a generous brother. He turned and said to them, Idhabu, fa'antum atulaqa. Go. You're free. All of you are free to go. A massive amnesty for everyone has never happened in the history. It probably will never happen again. To where your arch enemies are forgiven. In such an easy way. Muhammad, peace be upon him, brothers and sisters out there, had mercy even for those who already have died. He's walking one day with his companions, and he saw two graves. And he said to the companions, They are being punished. And they're being punished for something that was simple for them to avoid. One of them used to gossip a lot. And the other did not protect himself from his own urine. Two easy, two easy things that could have been prevented. From the mercy of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he takes a stick, a fresh stick, and breaks it in half and puts one on every grave. And he said, maybe. Allah will ease their torture and punishment until they dry out. He walks one day, my brothers and sisters, in the streets of Medina. And he sees a child crying. And that child's hand was a small pet bird. 
that had passed away. And he's crying. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw this child crying was not to just walk away. He stopped and he said, Mada fa'ala nughayr? Ya Aba Umair, what did your little bird? What happened to your little bird? Ya Aba Umair, he wanted to make him feel like he's an adult, the father of Umair. He sat there calming him and bringing some laughter into his life. He had time to stop and sit with the child that his little bird died. He had time to teach this mercy to all of us. Do we have time to listen to these teachings? To implement them in our lives? To have mercy on our loved ones? To have mercy on our families? To have mercy on ourselves? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to have even mercy on ourselves. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa says in the hadith, مَنْ لَمْ يَرْحَمِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَرْحَمُهُ اللَّهِ Whoever does not have blessings on the people, Allah will not have blessings, have mercy on the people, Allah will not have mercy on him. Today, in this world of chaos and bloodshed everywhere, aren't we in need of this mercy, brothers and sisters? The mercy that the Rasul had against his enemy. After the battle of Badr, the prisoners of war were there. They were the greatest enemy of his. The head of the army in the state of the enemies. He could have took their lives away and relieved himself from future danger. But he let them go. Unharmed. Unwhipped. Unpunished with their dignity and with their honor. If you look at the history of Muhammad, peace be upon him, there wasn't a time where that he did not want to put himself in the face of danger to have the mercy on people. How could we say anything bad about this man? When he would walk calmly because he didn't want no ants to be stopped. He didn't want to kill the insect. Not just the humans. Did you know, brothers and sisters, that he entered many battles in his life? Many. He never killed anyone with his hands except one. And this is somebody that swear that he will kill the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And during the battle of Uhud, he took on himself and charged and marched toward the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there was an arrow, a spear, in the hand of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He threw it toward that direction. It scratched the man on his neck. Scratch. And he ran. And he was screaming. Muhammad killed me. He said, it's just, it's just a scratch. He said, Wallahi, if he was to spit in my face, he would have killed me. That was the only one reported to die by the hands of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With all these battles, brothers and sisters, none was ever harmed by the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Had you come to the conclusion of our episode, I think you and I agree that the mercy that he possessed was beyond our imagination mercy with the trees and the flowers with his family and children even with his enemy I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the peace and mercy on all of us and he has the world go back and learning how to be peaceful towards each other and these wars come to an end and this bloodshed comes to a stop and for you and I to find our way towards each other I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.